Hi everyone, my name is David Odegaard. I'm the Director of Training and Education at the STAR program. Today we're going to present for you a session on interprofessional education, and we're gonna do that through the lens of an HIV case presentation. We will review what IPE is, uh, review the roles of people in our health center, and look at a, a case of a fairly difficult to manage patient and see how that plays out um, in the context of interprofessional care. This is, program is sponsored by uh, the AIDS Education Training Center, which is funded by HRSA. So first of all, what is interprofessional education? The background here is that in the early 2000s, the Institute of Medicine issued a series of reports that raised a lot of concerns around medical errors, patient safety, and the quality of healthcare in the US. What they found, and this is no surprise to us here at Downstate, is that healthcare professions tend to train in silos without an emphasis on team dynamics. The problem being that this lack of teamwork and communication was leading to adverse and costly outcomes and poor patient management. Today, uh, US leaders in the medical professions, they understand that we have not only a need for team-based education and collaborative care models, but that we need to start educating our health professions um, when they are students and uh, to talk about these models for care. You are about to, you're in a transition to clerkship and you're about to go into settings where you will meet interdisciplinary teams. And so this is part of your preparation for that. So who are we? Well, we're all from the STAR um, program, um, the STAR Health Center. And SUNY Downstate has been really at the forefront of HIV care and research, not only for Brooklyn, but really for the US in terms of research um, since it was first identified in the early 80s. The HIV care services at Downstate is centered at the Star Health Center. And we have transformed beyond um, just HIV care to include HIV prevention services with PrEP and PEP, um, HCV treatment, monotherapy, opioid use disorder treatment, and also the clinical care needs for LGBTQ um, and gender non-conforming communities. What we're going to do now is talk about a case. Uh, and while we talk about the case, we'll introduce different members of our team to talk about what they do, what their roles are, and how we work together to provide optimal health care to our patients. To get us started, I'm going to turn things over now to Dr. Manisha Singh, who's one of our attending physicians at the Star Health Center. Manisha, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so as David mentioned, we are going to discuss this case to illustrate how the various team members come together to provide the best care to our patient. So this patient was a 37-year-old lady who presented to Star Clinic uh, as a new intake for um, establishing care. The patient had been diagnosed with HIV in the past and was on antiretroviral therapy, but for the past one year before she presented, she had been off all medications. She was born in New York City and lived in Brooklyn, uh, lived by herself. She was a smoker for the past 20 years and drink, uh, drinks alcohol every day. She also had a past medical history of type 2 diabetes. Uh, in addition to diabetes, she had an untreated hepatitis C infection, uh, alcoholic liver disease, as well as peripheral neuropathy. When she presented, she was not on any medications um, at that time. Her chief complaint was that she felt generally weak and also had had ho alcohol-related hospitalization recently. Her labs were abnormal in terms of a high viral load, and her liver function tests, including AST and ALT, were also elevated. 
uh, we started, we planned to start her on medications, antiretroviral therapy, and also plan to treat her for hepatitis C. So when a patient comes to the clinic for the first time, the first person uh, the, uh, the patient would meet would be a member of the nursing team at Star Health Center. And here is Maloma Carrington. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Maloma Carrington. I am an LPN at the Star Clinic. I've been an LPN for eight years now. As a nurse at the STAR clinic, my role is to triage the patient as they come into the clinic. I start by taking the patient vital sign and collecting any substance abuse information. I also perform diagnostic testing and also administer POIM sub-Q medication. I also communicate instruction regarding medication at home case and discuss preventative lifestyle changes with the patient. I will now hand you over to uh, Patricia DeFosco. I'm Patricia DeFosco. I'm a nurse practitioner in the clinic. I will see patients at their initial visit for the medical part or the medical component of the visit. I do the explaining to the patient of what the positive status means for the patient what to expect from HIV care, and then answer any questions the patient has. I perform the physical exam, identify any comorbidities the patient may have in addition to HIV, whether it be um, medical-based or psychosocial, and take care of whatever medical things for that visit, and then refer the patient to whatever um, ancillary staff or other specialties that the patient requires based on my assessment. Um, I'll typically identify the most appropriate medication um, at that time. Sometimes patients are taking other meds and we need to be mindful that there's no drug-drug interactions and with the help of the pharmacist, we'll pick the best choice for that patient and I'll provide that prescription so they could start their meds at that time. Um, order any follow-up diagnostics that the patient requires or any preventive screening tests get ordered at that visit and then follow the patient moving forward for their medical care related to HIV. So with this patient, because she has so many things going on and multiple issues happening simultaneously, it would be really useful for her to be linked with our care coordination program and at this point in the visit, once I've, I've completed all the medical pieces, I would introduce her and do like a hand delivery, warm handoff to care coordination and introduce her to Charles and their team. Hi, everyone. My name is Charles Francion, and I've been working at the STAR program for the past four years. I assist a patient living with HIV navigate their healthcare system. Uh, my department, which is the care coordination department, is very central to HIV care. So this is a patient-centered approach designed to remove all barriers to care a patient might face. It's also create um, retention to care and adherence to treatment, especially for a hard-to-reach population. So whenever a patient is referred to care coordination, we often start with uh, intake assessment where we screen all kinds of needs and concern patient might have, such as housing instability, um, lack of insurance, or uh, language proficiency. So we also develop some, uh, some kind of care plan with the patient uh, where we discuss um, what we will, what kind of services we will provide. Uh, for instance, a log apartment logistic, we might call, and also assistance in getting social services. So in the meantime, we'll stay in communication with all the providers involved in the patient care so they can be informed or aware of all kind of a concern or health outcome the patient might uh, report doing the, the treatment. Lastly, in collaboration with the providers or the primary care physician, we also link patient to other services that we have available in the clinic. So now I will hand it over to 
um, Chris will talk about the mental health department and what kind of service they provide. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Christopher Jimenez. Uh, I work as the uh, Assistant Director of Substance Abuse Services at the STAR program. Um, so Behavioral Health STAR program is a little bit different than uh, some other outpatient programs because we're there to serve the specific needs of our population. So in this case, um, this individual um, has a history of substance use. And so how we would uh, help out on, in the clinic is that we would provide uh, screening and assessment to see exactly how severe their substance abuse issues are. Um, we provide outpatient counseling, but outpatient counseling is not the same as, uh, say, a day program, uh, intensive outpatient. So we have to gauge and see what would be the best course of uh, treatment for this patient and what would be the most appropriate fit for them. Um, for the most part, uh, a lot of our patients are ready to, uh, you know, engage in at least uh, brief intervention, and that is a client-centered approach, um, and that's the approach that we use with all our clients um, at STAR uh, who have other behavioral health issues where we're not judging them and we're making sure to, uh, you know, make them part of their own treatment plan and gauge how much motivation they have uh, to address the issue. Uh, you know, during our screening and assessment, one of the things that we also do is, uh, you know, we do something called the psychosocial assessment. And while we're doing that assessment, other life stressors and issues can come up uh, that not only trigger the urge to use substances, but might trigger things such as uh, barriers to uh, treatment adherence and taking their medications on a consistent basis. Uh, when that happens, then we would bring in our clinical pharmacist and she would help to address those issues as well as other medication related concerns and questions. Hi, my name is Monica Douglas. I am a clinical pharmacist at STAR program. And some things that a clinical pharmacist can be involved with in a setting like this is we're here to really answer any questions about medications, um, help support medication adherence with our patients. Um, and we can also support general medication use processes and workflows within clinic. For this patient case, some specific areas we might be able to support the patient is by answering questions and providing educations about all of their medications, which could include their HIV medications, questions they might have about starting hepatitis C medications, as well as for diabetes. Um, and as part of a holistic approach to diabetes, I'm now going to pass it forward to Jackie, who's our registered dietitian. I've been a registered dietitian for 18 years, and I've worked in the HIV care setting uh, since the start of my career, in addition to various other settings, uh, such as inpatient settings, uh, corporate wellness, and owning a private practice. My role as a dietitian is to assess patients' health status, which includes reviewing labs, medications, obtaining patient concerns, symptoms, and addressing their goals. And I provide education on all aspects of diet and lifestyle behaviors that impact their health and disease. I provide support via one-on-one -on -one counseling um, and creating and providing education materials. And with this particular patient um, and with pretty much everyone, every patient I do an initial session, assessment with, is to get a better understanding of what their concerns are about their health and disease status, um, concerns about their symptoms and discuss their goals. I also wanna make sure that my patients understand how disease develops, specifically diabetes and in particular this, this patient, because oftentimes patients aren't educated on um, the how disease develops. And so that's a really, that's a critical component to empowering patients um, and helping them take the next step in, in knowing what to do to help improve their, their health. Okay, so uh, one year later, uh, we had a happy outcome and the patient is now pregnant, something that she had been trying to for a while. Um, now, Meredith Parrish, the midwife at STAR, would discuss the various services the patient would need in this particular case at this time. Uh, my name is Meredith Barish. I'm a midwife with the STAR program. Uh, I have two roles in the program. I, one is to provide prenatal care for pregnant patients living with HIV, 
My other role is working as a clinician for the men's and women's combined cohort study, which is a progressive study looking at people living with HIV. Uh, for this case, um, my role would be to provide routine prenatal care, um, trying to ensure a safe pregnancy, delivery and postpartum care. But in addition to that, we also wanna prevent perinatal transmission of HIV. So we wanna prevent the baby from becoming HIV positive. And we can do this by assuring that our pregnant um, patient is taking her antiretroviral medications, that she's adhering to those medications. If she's, uh, her viral load is undetectable, she will be untransmissible. So the way we uh, try to ensure this is by having a team approach to care. I collaborate with the infectious disease doctors, make sure that she's taking a medication that is safe for her in pregnancy. Uh, we will also collaborate with the high-risk doctors, being that she has uh, many uh, potential problems for this pregnancy with her history. We'll um, also collaborate with the mental health team and the nutrition services um, with her, with the substance abuse team. So make sure she's still adhering to her abstinence uh, for her smoking and her uh, alcohol. Um, we also wanna make sure that she's connected to any other services that she needs, that she has housing that's appropriate, that she's got supportive care and services that she needs, that she has her insurance. Um, we will um, connect her with her case managers, or maybe she'll also need someone to help manage all these different appointments that she might need so she can get those services as well. So I like to think of it as um, that we're kind of giving a, a great big hug around this patient. So we're kind of supporting them in a very big holistic way and providing all the services that they need uh, for her to have this healthy pregnancy and have a healthy baby. So the case follow up two years later, um, she's currently taking all her medications without any side effects and has excellent adherence. The HIV infection is very well controlled. She has an excellent uh, immune response with a good CD4 count and her viral load is completely suppressed. She remains abstinent from alcohol and the baby is healthy and remains HIV negative. Thank you, Manisha, and thanks to all of our panelists uh, today. Although we had eight different providers in various roles um, telling you how they would give care to our patient, there are a lot of other team members at the Star Health Center. For example, the front desk staff, they're critical. They're often the first face that a patient who's in crisis might see when walking into the clinic for the first time. And then there's a whole knot of benefits and financial issues to untangle. As Meredith pointed out, we're also a site for research. And we have special initiatives, for example, PrEP and substance use services and coordinated care that require separate funding streams. And that requires grant writing and grant management. So all of these interdisciplinary teamwork um, efforts, not only supports our individual patients, but it also answers to our mission to meet the needs of the central Brooklyn community. Lastly, perhaps we'll see some of you in the coming year here at STAR. If you sign up for the infectious disease elective rotation, you'll have an opportunity to rotate through the STAR Health Center. We'd love to see you. Thank you. Thank you.